Hi, what we're going to do now is we're going to start talking about integrals. We're going to start out with the basic idea of the, idea of the integral, which is to estimate the area under our curve. When we talk about a curve, we're basically talking about a function. And we're talking about area, we're thinking about exactly what you think of as area. But in particular, we're going to talk about the area between the x-axis and the function itself. So let's take, for example, we'll take the uh, function y equals x squared. Or excuse me, not y equals x squared, but y equals x. Okay, so here's y equals x. All right, and let's say, for example, I want to figure out uh, from 0 to 4. Okay, I want to find the area under the curve from 0 to 4. And we look here, we can see that's a triangle. Okay, all right, and we want area from 0 to 4. Okay, and so that's 4 by 4, right? The width is 4, the height is 4, so it's going to be 1 half 4 times 4. And so that equals 8. Okay, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about the area under the curve. We want to know how much space is there between the graph or the function on the Cartesian plane and the, um, the x-axis. Okay? And these areas sometimes can be positive, they can sometimes be negative, it just depends. Um, they're negative if they're down below the x-axis. So, for example, if I had something down here below the x-axis, this area in particular, right, from 4 to 8, it would be then negative 16 because it's 4 by 4, okay, and it's below the x-axis. So that area right there is negative 16, all right, because it's below the x-axis. Now, for these ones, for like squares and uh, triangles and rectangles, it's actually really easy to find area. It's easy to find area for circles, too, because we know how to find them. We have formulas for them. But what if we don't have a function that's as neat or as tidy? And that's one of the big things about uh, that we're going to get into um, in, this, in this lesson. We're going to look at how is it that we're going to estimate that area underneath the curve. Let's say what we want to do is we want to use, we want to find the area of the curve y equals x cubed, and we want to find it for the interval from 0 to 3. Okay? So we'll draw. Okay? And so here's 0, 0, 1, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? Da, da, da. And then it just starts really getting big, right? Okay? Until at 3, it's like 27. Okay? So let's just imagine that that's 27 up there. We're looking for the area in here. This is the area that we want to know. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually break that up into, into rectangles. So I'll start here. And I'm going to actually break it up into three, three slots in this case. Right. So we'll let this, we're going to call it n equals 3. That's how many intervals we've got. And so my first interval is going to be at 1. My second one is going to be at 2. And my third one is going to end up at 3. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and I'm going to cr create my rectangle at one. Then I'll take my second re rectangle, we'll make it a two, and then my third rectangle we're going to make it end up at three. Okay. All right. So if I look at how I drew this rectangle, I drew it at the right hand side. I could have started out at zero zero, and then I would have had a very different rectangle, and then one uh, at one, and then two, and three or excuse me, 0, 1, and 2 instead of 1, 2, and 3. But we're going to do it starting at the 1, 2, and 3, and we call these at the right end points. Okay? So this first rectangle, if I look at it here, well, it's intersecting the curve, okay? We're going to intersect the curve at 1, 1. So f of 1 is just equal to 1, and then the length there, or the interval there, is called delta x. And our delta x is going to equal 1. So delta x equals 1 because the size of each one of the intervals is 1. Okay. And then f of 1 is the value of the function at that particular point. So here's 1. That's at 1, 1. Okay. And so its area, if we write its area, is going to equal, right, f of 1 times 1. And that's the first rectangle. So area is going to equal 1 times 1. Plus our next rectangle, 
Well, it's still going to have delta 1. Okay, by the way, we'll write this as delta x. Excuse me. It's still going to have delta x, the value of 1 for the interval. But now its height is going to be 8. So it's going to be 8 times 1. That's the area of the second rectangle. And then the third rectangle goes all the way up to 27. And so it's going to be 27 times 1. And so this ends up giving me 1 plus 8 plus 27. It ends up being 36. And so 36 is the area of this particular set of rectangles when we have the intervals of size 1, 2, and 3. Okay? Let's take a look if I chose a different way to start those rectangles here. All right? So now, once again, we're going to draw the graph. The graph's going to remain exactly the same. All right? But now, instead, I'm going to start over at 0, like I said I would. And instead, 0, so there's the 0 first one. The second one is going to go from here, from 1 out to 2. And the third is going to go, we're going to go back up to 2, and it's going to go from 2 into 3. So what you see here is, is where we chose on the curve to draw our endpoints is at the left endpoints. So this one's at the left endpoints. Delta x is still the length of each one of these intervals. So delta x here equals 1. Um, but f of x, uh, well, f is still going to be the same, but we're going to start at f of 0. So f of 0 will end up equal 0. So our area, okay, is going to be f of 0 times in this case, 1, plus now f of 1 times 1 plus f of 2 times 1, which is the, then going to be 0 plus 8 times 1 plus 27 times 1, which just simply equals, or excuse me, plus 1 times 1 plus 8 times 1, which ends up equaling 9. So choosing those left endpoints actually gives me a much, much different value for my area. The estimate on my area for the right endpoints was 36, and the estimate for my left ones was 9. Well, how do I end up getting something so different? Well, let's take a look. When I chose the right endpoints, what I was choosing for is I was choosing a value, the top end, the very top end of that interval from 0 to 1, at 1. And so I was getting as big a rectangle as I possibly could. The same thing for the second one when I used the right endpoints. I ended up with as big a rectangle as I possibly could. So consequently, I ended up with more space, okay, than was actually under the curve. Same for the third. On the other side, when I chose the left endpoints, these guys here, what I ended up with was I ended up with the smallest amount, okay, the very smallest amount that I possibly could for each one of the rectangles. And so what I ended up with is a big underestimate because every single one of the rectangles was under the curve. In the case of my first one with the right endpoints, end it ended up being an overestimate, right? Because each one of the values was over the curve. Well, all right, so I get an underestimate and I get an overestimate. It's clear that it's not actually the area of the curve, so how do I get better? Well, the answer to how I get better is, one, I could choose different places to actually locate these guys, like say, for example, the midpoint, right? If I chose right in the middle, like 0.5, okay? Let's take a look at that. So if I chose the midpoint, now I'm going to use 0.5 as where I'm going to locate my rectangles. My delta x, the length of each one of the intervals, is going to remain exactly the same because it's just a matter of 1. But now, okay, instead, I'm going to pick my midpoints, and it's going to give me a very different region. Okay? And in fact, it will give me a better estimate. It will probably be a better estimate than both of them. But is it still perfect? No. It looks actually quite a lot like it's still going to be a pretty drastic underestimate. But it's better than the first one. So we could choose midpoints. Choose midpoints for our estimate. That's one way to do it. Or another way, our preferred way, the way that we're going to do it, is we'll just make more boxes. Okay? So let's say, for example, now let's kind of zoom in. And what, we gotta, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. And we're going to make every four boxes. Okay, equal, so we're going to zoom in a bit, and let's just take a look at this one-to-one, -one. and now, instead, we're going to, let's just look at it from the perspective of starting with 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1, okay, 
And then we can do uh, ones going up to two, okay, where you're going to get quite a significant number. So 1.25, 1.5, 1.75. And this actually quickly gets very large, and it makes you want to do something more clever. But we could look at this, we could say, okay, so now when I break up one, when I break up those intervals into four equal parts, what I'm doing is, is I'm now systematically eliminating either part of the overestimate or part of the underestimate. Okay? So like for example, I go over here, okay. And so like this whole area in here that would have been under the curve, okay, this whole area in here, which would have been under underneath the the estimate is no longer under the that estimate. So we're actually getting a better and better estimate each and every time by just adding more and more rectangles. So to improve the estimate, we want to increase our rectangles, increase the number of rectangles. And in our next section, we're actually going to see how this actually ends up giving us something called the integral, okay, is because what we end up with is we end up with an infinite number of rectangles, and then we squish them all in, and they give us a really, really good estimate. Okay, so what we want to do is, or we increase the number, the number of intervals. So if you look over here, delta x equals one, and that with even with the midpoint still doesn't give us a very good uh, estimate. But over here, delta x equals 0.25, and that's a much better estimate. That's going to be a much better uh, uh, set of information. Okay, because what we're going to do is systematically underestimate and overestimate less. Okay. Because our delta x, how big each one of those intervals is, is actually just 0.25. Bring it down to 0.1, you get an even better estimate. Bring it down to 0.01, you get an even better estimate. So like I said, the more intervals we have, okay, the more, um, the better an estimate we get because delta x gets smaller and smaller. Okay? So let's take a look at this and let's actually uh, kind of make this a little bit more rigorous. So first, f of x is our function. n is the number of subintervals that we will break our region into, that we will break the inter interval into. Our interval, we're going to call it a to b. We get closed. It could be open, actually, or a to b. Okay. And so consequently that our delta x is going to end up equaling b minus a divided by n. So basically what you're going to do is you take the top end minus the bottom end. That gives me the entire length of the, the region. And then you'll divide it by the number of subintervals. And that's your delta x. So our Riemann sum, or what we call our Riemann sum, or our, our area, is going to equal the sum, and we'll call it um, i equals 1 up to n of f of x i star times delta x. And now this xi star, we need to define what that is too. So xi star is wherever you are sampling your heights from. Or technically, I mean, if you really wanted to think about it, it's where you're, you're picking your x's, then you're going to plug them in f of x, and then it's going to give you your height. Okay? So f of x i star is the height. X i star, wherever you are sampling your heights from, f of x i star is the height. We get here, so this is height. This is width. Height times width, that gives me the area of rectangle. And then we just add up the rectangles. That's what the summation is. It's adding up the rectangles. Now, our x i stars, where we pick our sample points from, they depend upon where we choose to do it. So we might do it, say, for example, from the right end point, from the left end point, or the midpoint. Or we might do something like a lower sum or an upper sum where we pick the lowest value in the entire interval or the highest value in the entire interval. Wherever we pick my, our, end, our endpoints from or xi stars from is going to change the value of our, um, our area. So here's the area. And this function right here is called a Riemann sum, named after a German dude named Riemann. All right? And basically what it is is it's... Uh, It'll be, end up being the analytic way in which we actually define an integral. Okay? So that thing's called the Riemann sum. So let's take a look at an example of how to find something. So let's say, for example, we want to do something like this. Estimate using right endpoints and n equals 4. f of x equals the square root of x cubed. 
from zero to one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is the first thing I'm gonna notice is n equals four, and I wanna find delta x. So delta x is gonna be, here's b is one minus zero, right? So the upper limit of the interval minus the lower limit of the interval divided by four. Okay, so that's gonna end up being 0.25. So we're going to have each one of those intervals can be 0.25. Then what we're going to do is we need to imagine what our right endpoints are going to look like. Okay. So let's just say one, two, three, four. Okay. So here's zero. Here's 0.25. That's the next one. Then 0.5 then 0.75. And then finally one. So each one of our intervals, uh, that's all of our intervals. Okay. And we're going to start on the right one. So we're going to start at 0.25. Okay, and then the next one will be 0 0.5, and the third one was going to be 0 0.75, and the fourth one is going to be 0 0.1, or is going to be 1. Okay, and we'll have four of them because we have four of these intervals. Now, so what that means is that our area is going to equal the sum of, it'll be first, f of 0.25 times 0.25. So that's f of xi star plus times delta x plus f of 0.5, that's the next value. So here's the first endpoint. Here's the second right endpoint times 0.25 plus f of 0.75 times 0.25. There's my third endpoint plus f of 1 times 0.25. And there's my fourth endpoint. And then all I need to do is I just need to put this in my calculator and it'll give me what my sum is. So what this will give me then is that this is going to end up being the cube root or the square root of the cube, 0.25 cubed times 0.25 plus 0.5 cubed times 0.25 plus 0.75 cubed times 0.25 plus 1 cubed square root times 0.25 which ends up equaling or approximately equal to 0 0.532, 0 0.532010102, 0 okay? And that's our estimate. So basically what, what, what I did, if you can imagine what this graph looks like, the graph is kind of a, kind of looks a little bit like that, is I went out, I drew rectangles, or I estimated what the rectangles would look like for each value. And then I added up all those rectangles, and this is what I gave you. All right, so key points here. One, we need to figure out how many intervals that we have, and that'll help us to figure out what delta x is, right? Our delta x is the end point of the interval minus the beginning point divided by n, okay? And that's really important because that's then gonna help you to figure out where to place each one of the values along uh, your entire interval, right? This one broke it up into four pieces, so a quarter a piece, okay? Now, the next part is, where am I going to actually draw each one of my rectangles? Where am I going to find f of x? I'll find f of x, in this case, at my right endpoints, okay? Because that's what I said. If it were left endpoints, we'd do it the opposite way around. We'd end up with a much different uh, value, okay? But we use right endpoints. So the right endpoints are going to define what these xi values are within the, uh, the function. If there were left endpoints, like I said, you'd get like 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5. 0.75. They'd look different. Okay. Then all we need to do is just, you know, plug it into our formula for our area, right, for each one of the rectangles and add them all together. And that's how you find the area using our rectangle approximations. Key things to remember. One, the integral, when we start talking about it, will be defined as area under the curve. Two, we can estimate the area under a curve using rectangles. Depending upon where we ch choose to find our x's, where we choose to sample our x's, we will get different estimates. And in addition to that, the more rectangles we draw, the better our estimate gets. Eventually, we'll get an infinite number of uh, uh, rectangles, and that will give us, in fact, our integral itself. All right. So this completes the lesson.